Hi guys, thanks again for tuning in to Fishy for Michi. This is uh, Mitchell and yep, today we're going to talk about um, testing your aquarium for all those um, stuff that really kills your fish, kills your plants, kills your reefs, everything and that, that fishes don't like. As you know, aquarium waters need to be tip, need to be in a tip-top condition so that your fish can survive, you know, plants and reef. So um, yeah, there are many types of uh, testing equipment and testing kits that you can buy out there. Um, mainly is uh, what I use, the API. I have also the Salifert test, uh, Aqua Forest test, and Neos test. Basically, all these are for testing other stuff for my other aquariums. All right, so for the, today we're gonna go through the API test kit. API is a very common brand and um, they're also well known for their test kits because um, the test kits are, I find it the API test kits are the most easiest to do, to use. Um, not saying easiest to read, but easiest to use. Okay, because um, it's very straightforward. The um, idea that they made it is just a couple of drops into your water and a couple of drops into your test tube and it's all done. So for the API test kit, what you will get is actually um, four tests, or should I say five tests, two for pH, one for ammonia, one for nitrite, and one for nitrate. As you know, all these stuff affect your aquarium, uh, especially your pH. pH, you need to maintain it so that uh, fish don't get crazy. Um, plants don't get crazy. Plants don't get crazy too. Uh, ammonia. Ammonia kills fish. Uh, plants do absorb ammonia, but I don't know what ammonia they try. I heard there are, there are a couple of types of ammonia. Free ammonia, um, non-free ammonia. I, I, I never knew. So probably, you know, when you went to the doctor to test your urine and, and the doctor says, Oh, your urine's bad. So most probably that's the bad ammonia. And if the doctor says, oh, your yeah, urine is good, uh, most probably that's the good ammonia. Okay, so um, same for aquarium water. You test your test the ammonia, nitrite. Nitrite, uh, ammonia that has been broken, broken down into um, a slightly less toxic, but it's still very, very toxic for fish. So ammonia and nitrite should be zero. That's what, that's what I read on Google. Uh, and that's what we all know. Nitrates, um, you can have below 5 parts per million, so below 5 ppm, anything below 5 or 0 0.5, I think below 0 0.5, um, we'll find out, okay, it's all written in there. And nitrate, nitrate, you can have a little, and it's a bit, it's a bit difficult to get rid of nitrates, because um, when food and waste are broken down fish uh, from fish, or from plants, or from whatever that's in your aquarium, the bacteria usually converts them all the way to nitrate and nitrates are um, a bit difficult to get rid of so they will stay in your water until you do a water change I personally do a water change once a week for my planter tank and uh, three times a week for this super overstock tank which um, I will explain to you in another video why it's overstocked so for nitrates as well as um, something called phosphates phosphates are also released and it's quite difficult to get so if you want to get rid of nitrates and phosphates, there are a lot of uh, different stuff that you can get out there. Um, there are medias which you can get, such as the Seacam Force Guard and the... Um, what are those? You can get uh, Algon. Algon is like some uh, nitrate and phosphate remover. But we'll get onto that uh, another time when I'm talking about my algae, how to get rid of my algae in my tank or algae even nasty. Uh, so without further ado, let's see what's in the box. So when you open up your test kit, what you can what will you find what you'll find is you have your ammonia test. Okay, solution one, solution two. Okay, we will delve into that uh, later on. You have high range pH and normal range pH. Probably normal range is um something below things that you can measure on a daily basis and high range probably something higher like if you're measuring your your saltwater aquariums and all of this so i will uh, go through the manual with you nitrates okay nitrates test and nitrate just one bottle for nitrate okay so you have all your, your bottles here which is uh, so neatly packed inside this box which i love it and we have Glass test tubes, uh, that's one thing good. Uh, API is one of those uh, that use glass test tubes. Uh, I know some other brands, they don't use glass, they use uh, plastic. But yeah, I like it. Okay, and we have our color chart here and some unnecessary information. 
Okay, so before we begin, uh, things to take note when you're doing water testing is to get a cloth, a mop, um, something that it cleans up all our water because uh, sometimes you know water from fish tank gets all over the place. Yeah, probably you get a new shirt or a new pants so you don't get wet. Um, and you need a beaker. Okay, somewhere to store your water. And I, I like to use a test tube, but um, sometimes after using it for a while, you see the, the numbers have all run out. So I, I can't even tell what 5ml is, 10ml. Yep, but I'll still use it. For things that I test like um, pH and um, um, nitrites, those that do not require much shaking, I would prefer to use uh, cups, measuring cups. These cups were, were given when you when I bought the, the supplements for my tanks, like you know your your when you buy some of your fish uh, supplements, they will give you this measuring cup. Yeah, so I use these to test. Okay, and it's uh it's actually better than I feel it's better than the test tube. Okay, because the test tube first of all it's harder to clean, right? You gotta find something that you can push it in to clean up the stuff and everything. And also one thing about these test tubes, the cup the covers do not close properly. Okay. How hard you press, and if you shake it too hard, the water will tend to seep through, or the solution will tend to seep through. So that's why um, I like the test tubes, but you know, sometimes uh, you probably, probably have to put more thought into it when making these test tubes. Okay, so we don't need this. These are what, what I have is actually a timer. I do not use a timer actually, but um, just for testing purposes, because uh, show you because some of these requires. Uh, specific times that you need to take a look at it, specific times that you need to, number of times that you need to shake and uh, you know, so yeah. Let's go through this uh, manual. So in the manual, you'll find that, okay, for testing pH, we'll go to pH first. Um, it's actually quite simple. They tell you why you need to test pH. Okay, pH is a measure of acidity in the water, blah, blah, blah. We all know why we need to measure the pH. Basically, it's not about measuring pH, it's about maintaining pH, okay? So we measure the pH today, let's say it's um, seven. And we want to get it up to 8, so we add probably more buffers. Okay, if it's 8, we want to get it back to 7, we add buffers too, or we do water changes. So depending on what uh, type of water you have in your place, if you're more acidic water, the water will become more acidic as you change. If it's more alkaline, you will become more alkaline as you change the water. Okay, so for pH tests, um, testing tips, the minimum reading is 6, and the maximum is 7.6. Okay, that is for the pH, the normal pH here, pH solution. Okay, so the directions is to fill 5 ml of water to be tested, okay, and then 3 droplets of the test solution. So they'll give you all the details here, okay. Recommended pH level. A pH level of 7 is ideal when keeping a community aquarium. So this one looks like community aquarium. It has uh, two different types of fish, and actually both have uh, two different types of fish. So we try to keep it with 7, but because I'm keeping plants, so I usually try to get it up to 7.8 or probably 7.6. I'll tell you the parameters for my tank when I do the tank uh, review. All right, so for this, okay, let's get started. Okay, let's go, we start off with um, pH, how to test for pH. Okay, we'll do the normal pH test. We'll do the high range. We will do the ammonia test. We'll do the nitrate test and the nitrate test. Okay, so we'll go in order like that. First of all, since we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five tests, I should get probably five uh, per test requires five ml, so I'll get twenty five ml of uh, aquarium water from my super stock tank, so you can see the drastic change. Okay. Okay, this feels like um, twenty five ml. I think. Okay, let's just put more. Just, just be safe. Okay, so in theory, um, the tank supposed to uh, is supposed to have um, acidity level of uh, seven, but there's plants in there, so probably it will go up to about seven point four. Um, it's, it's, I, I didn't really buffer this tank, so probably seven point four, just slightly above seven. Um, for the fish, uh, for the ammonia, um, zero. I hope because it's a really, really stock tank. There are 22 fishes in this uh, small little tank. And nitrate, it's supposed to be zero. And nitrates, I'm 
definitely guessing it would be booming with nitrates because uh, my water change time is tonight and uh, I'm going to change the water tonight, uh, probably about 30% tonight. Okay, so let's start off with a pH test. pH test will take, oops, 5 ml. Okay, for, for strange readings, there will always be one bubble there and the bubble actually comes from this little uh, tube here. Okay, this little tube here, if you do not rinse it, okay, there will always be a bubble in there. Just to take note, the bubble in that little uh, portion over here is actually 0 0.005 ml. So, you don't need to worry about it, okay? Without the bubble in there, okay, the reading will be 5 ml.005, okay? With the bubble, it's exactly 5 ml. So, remember, you don't need to get rid of the bubble from here. Okay, there will always be a bubble if you're using uh, syringes. So we'll do the same for this one. Zero point five ml. All right. Love a good zero point five ml. I mean five ml. Okay, five ml. All tests are five ml, not zero point five ml. All right. Just uh, shake it a couple of times to get the solution running. And what it says here is for the normal pH test solution, three drops. Okay. One. Two, three. Okay, and sometimes something might get over it. Cover it up and shake it all about. Okay, before we do the high range pH test, we might be able to determine what the high range pH test is by looking at the low range test. Okay, remember, as I said, the high range tests are for those who. Uh, need really high uh, range like um, probably 8 to 8.4 to 8.6 alright so the low range test goes up to 7.6 anything above that you need the high range test but not probably not over 20 it goes up to 8.8 .8 for the high range test which that is the maximum you need for a marine aquarium right okay 8.8 .8. okay for freshwater aquariums I don't recommend you go up to 8.8 .8. if you, it's at 8.8 .8, there's something wrong with the thing okay so let's take a look at um the readings now so what what do you do is once you get the the readings the color you have to match it okay with the color code sheet over here which something which is something I quite um, find very difficult to do okay based on my uh, experience okay, and I've been doing this for quite some time and I still find it very difficult to do okay is to match the correct color Okay. Oh, as you can see, it's actually not very good because um, my water is quite acidic and it's because maybe there's too many fish in there. The conversion from ammonia to nitrites uh, always releases some acid. Okay, so the more fish you have in there, the, the more acid is produced. And my local tap water uh, is actually at a pH of 8. So, so when I do water change, it usually neutralizes the acid. Okay, so now... As you can see, my acid is running at approximately 6.8 to 7, okay? Which is actually um, uh, not what I wanted. I usually go up slightly above 7, 7.2, 7.4, okay? So, we'll see how, what it, how it goes in, uh, in probably after I do the water change, okay? That's for tonight. So, now that you know that it's at uh, 7.0 or 6.8 to 7, Okay, I can definitely tell you that the high range pH test will be at the brown here, 7.4 because okay, it's definitely below 7. Alright, so let's just put it to the test. And I lost the high pH range, okay. This is um, for the high range pH, 5 drops. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five. Okay, and it would most definitely turn brown. There you have it. No questions asked. Oh, and about lighting. So sometimes, um, if you have a more warm light in your house, like um, those like yellowish uh, warm lights, um, anything below five thousand six hundred uh, K, um, the colors here might be slightly different. I, I like to use natural lighting, um, fluorescent lighting. Fluorescent lighting too may make your color slightly different, but um, I used I, I go for more 5600 um, K lighting 
which is um some likes are my thank here and i sometimes just put it under the light here so that i can get a better reading okay anyway this is not 5006 just uh this is just an example okay so yep as you can see high range ph 7.4 exactly because this is the minimum that you can go to for the normal ph test 6.8 to 7 which after the water change tonight i hope that okay, it goes back to normal i'll do another test tonight okay so that's for your ph Ammonia can be tested in a, in this cup too because um, we don't need the test tube. But uh, the only one that I realized that we need the test tube is actually nitrate because there's a lot of shaking and hokey, po okay, hokey poking. All right, so let's test the ammonia. Same as the other test, 5 ml. Okay, if you are not confident about the 5 ml, yeah, there's another pizza measuring cup, so definitely 5 ml. Okay, and give it a few shakes to the bottle. Okay, this uh, manual is actually quite good because they tell you when to shake the bottle and when not to shake the bottle. But now, uh, I would always give it a shake before I start. All right, so eight drops of uh, solution one. Okay, they'll tell you to drop it down like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Why did they, why did they tell you to drop it down directly like that? Most of the most of the test kits will tell you to do that. Okay, so that okay when you're using smaller test tubes, it actually covers the whole water volume. Okay, it doesn't trickle down at the side and only go to one area. Okay, so that is why they did it. But for this, just drop it, shake it all about, and then we'll add ammonia solution two. Okay, give it a big shake. Also, it drops. So ammonia is quite straightforward. It drops. It drops. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Okay, once you've done that, shake it all about, do the hokey pokey. All right. And yeah, okay, so it tells you to shake it for five seconds, if I'm not wrong. Okay, I'm only you can take the reading immediately, okay, as a uh, I said because the I'm using the fluval C3 and the biomechanical load is actually quite high. So I'm going to actually cut at zero. Okay. So as you can see. My idea, nice and zero. Okay. Once it starts to turn green, then you have some problem. I can see it's trying to creep into green, but um okay, probably it still looks a lot yellow, but uh, I always give the I always take the reading as the benefit of the doubt. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the worst reading is the benefit of the doubt. So, I usually think it's 0 0.1. Okay. Even if it shows yellow, I think it's 0 0.1. But um, nothing to worry. As long as it doesn't get to 0 0.2, then I will not do anything about it. Okay. But my water changes tonight. So, no worries about that. All right. So, yeah. Yellow. Good. Okay. And next, we have the nitrate test. But I am short of cups. So, I'll show you how to use the test tube. All right. So, for nitrate, same thing. Uh, this line here for API, which they're, they're nicely marked here, is actually 5 milliliters. So, what you can do is um, fill it up. Uh, now, I can fill slightly more. Okay. Let it trickle down to the side. Try not to have any bubbles so that uh, the, you get the exact 5 milliliters. Yeah. Okay. So just drop five and check it all about. Okay, we'll drop five uniform evenly. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I don't know how uniform can they can be because um, everything goes to the bottom anyway, and you still gotta shake it. So that's why I still use that. It's easier to shake. So just give it a shake for five seconds. Thousand two. Oh, if you want, you can use your timer. But by the time I on my timer, it's already been five seconds. Okay. More test for nitrites. Blah blah blah. You kill the fish. Complete process for five seconds. Oh. Okay. We need to wait for five minutes for the color to develop. So for nitrites and for nitrates, you need to wait for five minutes. We just calculate five minutes. So we will try to take the exact reading at five minutes. Uh, I read some video. I I mean I read some Google posts and I read some video. I've watched some videos stating that um after five minutes the color will change even more. But uh, so far I've never experienced that. 
But if you're just if you just want to be sure, want to be safe, and you want to be hundred percent sure you get the exact point zero zero one reading for your aquarium, then by all means wait for five minutes and take a look at it. Okay, take a measure. Okay, we do the nitrate one while we're waiting for the five minutes. Okay, nitrate is the most um, challenging one because there are a couple of things that you need to remember when doing the nitrate test. Okay, I dread doing the nitrate test, but nitrate test is the most important because definitely this tank is full of nitrates and definitely the readings will be off the chart. So that is why for my overstock tank, I do the nitrate test constantly and I do water changes every two days. Okay, so same thing. Five milliliters. Get the brim. If not enough, probably just take one or two drops. Yep. Okay. First of all, you need to put in, okay, ten drops of bottle one. And these bottles are made kid friendly, so your kids don't open it and drink it. All right. Fish friendly too, so your fish don't open it and drink it. Okay. Ten drops. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, the eleven drop was creeping out. Okay, so ten drop. And what you gotta do is you gotta shake this for five seconds. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Okay, and you get a nice urine color. Okay. And next. For the second bottle, okay, what you gotta do is you gotta actually shake it for 30 seconds. Okay, that is what I hate doing the most. Okay, so 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay. So I'll shake it until the clock reaches to 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Now time to do the drip. Okay, okay, this is what I hate the most. After shaking it, when you open it, yeah, you gotta be careful because it trickles down the side. Can you see? It trickles down the side. Yeah, so that's the thing. So always keep a cloth or uh, tissue beside you so you can wipe off the sides. There you have it. Okay, wipe the sides. Make sure there's nothing there. Make sure everything is down middle. And we let it start dripping. Solution bottle 2, okay? The one that we shook for 30 seconds. 10 drops, same as uh, bottle 1. Uniformity drops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. And for this, you gotta wait for... Oh, sorry. You gotta shake it for another one more minute. Alright, so once you put the 10 drops, here we go again. Okay, and there you have it. I shook it for one minute. All right, and as you can see, some of the liquid flowed out while you're shaking it. You don't have to shake it too hard, but the, they said in the manual, shake it vigorously. So I shook it vigorously and some of the contents spilled out. So that's why I said when the, uh, in the starting of the video, the caps are not really good. So if you want, um, you can probably buy something like this off of Amazon. Uh, test tubes with uh, those cork covers. Yeah, that's much better. It doesn't uh, come out. So it, it just flew out all over the table. Okay. Yeah. So make sure you always have uh, something to clean your table with this because it come out. Okay. And also, you got to wait for five minutes. All right. Okay. Now, five minutes for this is done. And let us take a measurement for our nitrates. As you can see, nitrates, we have, um, yeah, zero ppm. As I said, okay, the nitrite bacteria is actually quite um, um, quite fast acting. Okay, once the ammonia changes it to nitrite, they immediately change it to nitrate. And nitrates are the ones that it's more difficult to get rid of. Yeah, so looking at the other readings first, all right, pH, what I got to do is I got to change my pH level back to, back to probably uh, 7.5. 7.4 so a water change might do that i don't need any buffers high range ph uh because it's below 7.4 no reading ammonia it's uh, at yellow or probably creeping up to green so uh, a water change tonight might do it nitrites as usual zero okay and nitrates okay within the first probably two minutes of uh, uh talking 
the nitrate level has already risen to about 40 ppm, 40, as you can see over here, 40 ppm, yep, if you look on the, on the white cloth. Okay, and what I suspect it goes up probably, 40 and 80 looks exactly the same. So, uh, I'm going to do the what I do most, I take the, I give the worst reading a benefit of the doubt, so I will take it that it is at 80 ppm, okay, it really is exactly the same. I, I, I I can't really tell the difference. Okay. Yeah. So I think that my nitrate is now 80, 80 ppm. So I need to do an uh, emergency water change tonight, probably about um, 30 to 50 percent. And then tomorrow I will do one water change also. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you uh, like, also give me a thumbs up if you like the video and just stay safe, wear your mask, and take care.